Jimmy, I didn't even have to look around. I knew you were out there. <laughs> uh, good morning. Welcome to St. Andrews Presbyterian Church. Uh, this beautiful pre-Fourth of July uh, Sunday. Uh, for announcements, I'd like you to uh, take a look in your bulletin and highlight that uh, we'll have a fellowship, dinner, and game night. You're all invited. This will be July 9th. It will be at 6 p.m. Sandwiches and sides will be provided, and there will be a lot of fun. I don't think anybody ever leaves there not just smiling. There will be a uh, fellowship afterwards. There's not many of you here, so I would pray that you will all attend so I don't have to take the leftovers home with Lily prepared. Out in the narthex, there's a uh, place where you can sign up for your, your favorite hymns. We ask you, please do that. And uh, you can pass that on directly to Lynn or to uh, Christy, or you can sign up out there. Uh, the Meals on Wheels, you missed out, that's filled up. But I'm sure if they get in trouble, we'll all get a phone call. Are there any uh, announcements I missed?
Words are printed in, and the words are printed in your bulletin. Gavin Harris, the summons. That is where the tribes go up 
the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. What a line. Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Matthew 4, 18 through 22. This passage begins the, the ministry of St. James, who we will be discussing this morning. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee. They were mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Earlier this month, I was blessed to walk a section of the Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James. I walked with two great friends who many of you know, Charlene Suchan and Martin Cruz. You may remember when our dear friend and retired pastor, Tom Coy, took the pilgrimage a number of years ago. Maybe you have seen the Martin Sheen movie, The Way. I recommend it. My son-in-law spent time on the Camino in college. So I heard about this pilgrimage from many different sources over many years. Thanks to some well-placed peer pressure, I got to walk 112 kilometers, or 70 miles, across northern Spain. A pilgrimage is a journey to a sacred place. Santiago, like Jerusalem and Rome, is a major Christian pilgrimage city. You can walk over 500 miles on different trails to reach the Cathedral de Santiago. Like all things human, the pilgrimage is a mixed bag. It is the veneration of St. James then and now. It's also, it was also once an effort to drive the Moors out of Spain. James was a member of Jesus' inner circle, the standard bearer for turn the other cheek. And yet, St. James is often depicted as St. James the Moor Slayer. You will see statues of him and artwork. He is on a big white horse. He's holding a sword in the air, and under his feet are severed body parts. 
Then a quick second, a second later, you will see St. James as a pilgrim, dressed in brown, flappy hat, walking stick, and shell. It will really give you whiplash to follow the artwork and the course of St. James after death <coughs> ministry. The 12th and 13th centuries were a time of great social change. It was leading up to the Renaissance. It was also a golden age for pilgrims. Coming out of the pandemic, also a time of great social change, the Camino is being walked in record-breaking numbers. 446,000 people completed the pilgrimage in 2023. That's a lot of people in motion. The tradition on the Camino is to greet all the people along the way with the phrase, Buen Camino, Spanish for good road or good path. I miss all those helpful well wishes already. The pilgrims along this path are from all over the world. But differences fade when your focus is on your backpack, good shoes on your feet, and putting one foot in front of the other. There is no room to carry baggage from home. Even language barriers drop. Buen Camino, Buen Camino. It's warm and supportive. The Catholic churches all along our route were packed. Acts of kindness and greeting were freely given and warmly accepted. As you can imagine, it was jarring to come back to political season at home. What does the Bible tell us about James? What was his life journey before relics of his existence came to be revered in Santiago, Spain? James was born in Galilee to Zebedee and Salome. His parents may have been people of some means. Zebedee was a fisherman with hired help. Salome was among the women who followed Jesus, according to Matthew 27, 55, and provided for him. James and John were brothers. James was probably the older brother. We know nothing about his early life. Historically, he is referred to as James the Greater to distinguish him from the other Apostle James, James the Less. In this case, greater means older or taller. It was an identifier. It did not mean more distinguished. James was nicknamed by Jesus. Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. The brothers were probably between 15 and 20 years of age. They were old enough to be working full time for their father. They were also old enough to leave home and follow a rabbi. In several places in the Gospels, the brothers are presented as impetuous, zealous, and severe in temper. So Jesus nicknamed them well. What did James see for himself on his pilgrimage? James was called by Jesus. Matthew 4, 21, 22 tells us, as Jesus went out from there, he saw two brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. And he called them, 
Immediately they left the boat, their father, and followed him. Peter, Andrew, James, John. The first ministry group surrounding Jesus. If we walk the faith path with James, we are seeing Jesus form his ministry team. We are up close and personal with the inner circle of followers. James saw Jesus' power firsthand. Jairus was the leader of a synagogue who fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come and heal his dying daughter. Before Jesus reached the child, she died. Jesus only took Peter, James, and John with him to the leader's house, where he took the child by the hand and told her to rise. Scripture tells us they were overcome with amazement. That's not shocking, is it? James was there. James saw the transfiguration of Jesus. He was among the three disciples who saw Jesus transformed and then heard God identify the Messiah. Mark 9, 2 through 8 records, Jesus, Peter, James, and John are apart on a high mountain. Before their eyes, Jesus transfigured. His clothes glowed an unearthly white. Moses and Elijah appeared in conversation with Jesus. Then they were hidden in the clouds, and a voice spoke, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. James saw the transfiguration. He heard the voices. What must it have felt like then to witness the agony in Gethsemane? Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him into the garden, asked them to remain and to stay awake. While Jesus prayed in agony to accept the Father's will, the disciples slept. James was in the garden. James fell asleep. How human and how relatable. I did not pray to the relics of St. James in the cathedral. I did not expect a special blessing or special protection from this pilgrimage. But I truly stopped to think about what James saw, felt, and internalized. His pilgrimage was from an initial call to the cross to a post-resurrection ministry. It was worth the steps I walked to contemplate that kind of life, James' life. James died in 44 AD. It wasn't peaceful. Acts 12, 1 through 2 records that James was killed with a sword by the order of Herod Agrippa. The extra biblical traditions regarding James are fascinating. Our Catholic brothers and sisters do not worship saints. They only worship God. But they do pray to the saints, asking for their prayers and intercession. I'm going to quote from a Catholic encyclopedia, as I don't want to wrongly speak so very far out of my realm. It reads, according to this tradition, St. James the Greater, having preached Christianity in Spain, returned to Judea 
and was put to death by order of Herod. His body was miraculously translated to the north of Spain and later to Compostela, which town, especially during the Middle Ages, became one of the most famous places of pilgrimage in the world. Another extra-biblical tradition states that James' followers, James' disciples, placed his body in a stone boat and set it adrift on the Mediterranean Sea, where angels guided the boat to northern Spain. He was later buried in the province's capital. There is also the tradition of Plato, hermit. During prayer, he saw a bright light and followed it to a field. Peleo found the remains of a beheaded man. A local bishop, upon seeing the remains, proclaimed them to be St. James. De Compostela comes from the Latin for field of stars a reference to Peleo's bright light. We don't use the word pilgrimage all that often, but isn't that what the Christian life is? We are on a journey to a sacred place. We have to think carefully about what we pack, about the shoes on our feet. Are we carrying far too many worldly goods and worldly woes to move forward? Are the worries of today blocking our vision of the path? Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Life's pilgrimage is doable. We have Jesus' own words, pack lightly and follow his ways. He gives the rest needed for the journey. I have some observations from my experience. Number one, a packed church feels wonderful. Number two, while I love our tradition of simplicity in a worship space, I worshiped in spaces that engaged all five of my senses. And sometimes the urge to pray in those spaces was overwhelming. Three, nature looks and smells amazing. I saw 70 miles of it. I can't explain that beauty without a creator. Number four, people with purpose and a sense of community are at their best. We were never meant to travel life alone. And finally, I encourage you, turn off the TV. Leave your phone on the desk. There is a whole industry devoted to telling you life is bleak, unbearable, doomed. Lace up your pilgrim shoes and get out there because the light is shining and every pilgrim choosing to do God's work in the world makes it brighter. Am I changed from my experience? Hopefully a little. I'm not always the friendly sort when I'm out walking. I tend to nod, give a little wave, and 
keep right on going. But the other day, a small dog was pulling toward me on a leash. And I asked the woman if I could approach and pet the dog. That's a small thing, but that's really not typically me. She said, of course. And within just a couple minutes, we were talking about caregiving and Alzheimer's. There were a couple of resources that had really helped my family during the Alzheimer's years. And I was able to share them. At the end of our conversation, she thanked me for helping her so much. And she asked to hug me. I wonder if he was blessed. Pilgrims don't pass each other by. They stop and they share the path. Blessings <coughs> on your journey, pilgrims. Don't pass each other without a greeting. Buen Camino. Let us please turn to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, overseer of our pilgrimage, overseer of us going out and coming in, please bless our steps. Please help us to look for you in every step. Please help us to create, to celebrate your light in the world and to carry it forward in all dark places. Please help us to reflect on the way of your followers, like James. Lord, next week we celebrate the birthday of our nation. Please help us to see America clearly. Help us to celebrate all her accomplishments and to help her reach her potential. Help us to wish all our neighbors Buen Camino. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please stand and join us.
be one that you are pleased to walk and grateful to share. In Jesus' name, we ask for blessings. Amen. Amen. Amen.